Okay, first, let's get on the same page with the terms we will be using to build this. SMS, or short messaging service, is what a text message is, which is limited to 160 characters and sent over mobile networks. And MMS, or multimedia messaging service, it's basically the same thing as a text message, but instead with embedded multimedia, like images, videos, or even PDF files, which I actually didn't know you could send over text messages until about yesterday. And in order to send free text messages, what we'll be doing is actually using SMS gateways, which are servers that serve as middlemen that can be used to deliver our messages to mobile phones via mobile networks. Now, unlike alternatives like Twilio, which let you send text messages programmatically using their API for a fee, these SMS and MMS gateways can be used for free because one of the ways we can interact with them is using email. In other words, these gateways, which have been set up by the mobile providers, allow us to send our text messages in the form of an email and then forward our messages to mobile phones via SMS or MMS. To make your life easier, I have taken the liberty of aggregating a list of SMS and MMS email domains for US phone providers, which you can find in the description. As a quick explanation, this is how it works. Using a 10 digit US phone number, we can take the phone number followed by the at symbol and then followed by the domain of the SMS or MMS server. Some providers might actually not give you the ability to send multimedia messages or will use a single domain for both short messages and multimedia messages. So because of that, I have noted this in the list I aggregated with the use of an SMS supported key. Other than having the email domain for SMS or MMS for your provider, you also need to have an email address, which gives you access to their SMTP servers. For our example, we will be using Gmail and Gmail's SMTP server, so you will need to have a Gmail account. You should also set up an app password as a way to log in to the SMTP server without needing two-step verification. You can do this by going to myaccount.google.com forward slash app passwords, select email for the app dropdown and any device. Then you will get a password, which we can later use to authenticate with Gmail's SMTP server. Now let's get to the code. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is import some modules that we're gonna be using. We'll be using email to format our emails later. We also need the SMTP library. We'll be using that to send our emails through the SMTP servers. We also need SSL, and we'll be using that as our connection with the SMTP servers. And then one more thing I want to add is actually the providers right here. Again, this will actually be in the description below, so you could actually get these and then it'll make your job a lot easier. We'll go back to SMS up high here. And now that we have this, let's actually start making the SMS portion. Now our function is actually gonna take a few parameters. The first one being the most obvious one, which is the actual number that we'll be using to send these emails. We also need the actual message that we'll be sending. And this again will be of type string. Next we'll use the provider, also of type string. The provider is actually gonna be the carrier, which again corresponds to one of these providers that we have over here in our list. And we need the sender credentials. And the credentials will actually involve not only the email that we'll be used to sending these out, but also that password that we got earlier using app passwords on Google. Now the subject will also be of type string. One thing here is that I've noticed that certain SMS gateways won't actually allow you to send out an email without having a properly structured email. And that's why we're including a subject here. So as a default parameter, I'm gonna go ahead and stick something here. We'll say sent using Python. Next, we'll add a parameter for the SMTP server. Now this will be using again as a default parameter. In this case, like I said before, we're using Gmail to actually send the emails. So the default for that is actually smtp.gmail.com. And one more thing we need is actually the port that's gonna be used to actually send these emails. Now, you don't really need to know much about this if you're using Gmail, but if you're using a different SMT provider or a different email server, you might wanna go ahead and see if they use a different port to actually send your emails. In our case, the SMTP port is going to be of type integer. So if you're curious about what just happened there, I'm actually using black to format our Python script here. That's why everything looks so much nicer. So the first thing we should define is the sender email and the email password for that sender. Now this information we're actually gonna be getting from the sender credentials here. And again, that's a tuple. So we'll go ahead and be using the tuple here. So that's gonna be the sender credentials. Now let's get the receiver email. And like I mentioned before, that receiver email is actually made up of the 10 digit number followed by the domain of the SMS server. So to format that, I'm gonna go ahead and use an F string here. I'm gonna go ahead and pass in the number here. Then we'll use the at symbol like any other email address is formatted, followed by the domain. Now, again, I do have a list of domains and providers.py. So let's actually go ahead and import that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and go up here and I'm gonna go ahead and import providers from providers.py. Providers, that's just the global variable that we're using again to define the providers here to import that. And also keep in mind that these two files are in the same directory or in the same folder. 
and in here from that provider's dictionary we'll actually get our provider and from that we'll get the sms now the reason i did this like this is because again if we go over here taking at&t as an example we have the AT&T, that's our actual get method for a provider. And then we're getting the SMS value for the SMS key, which is right here, right? So we have AT&T and then we have SMS. Now, if instead we want to use MMS, we'll use MMS instead of the SMS key here. Awesome. Now let's actually format our email message. So we'll make a variable called email message. Now, like I said before, some providers won't allow you to send messages unless it's actually structured like an actual email. That means that what we send doesn't only need a message, but it also needs a subject and who is being sent to. So again, we're gonna use an F string here. We're gonna go ahead and declare a subject. We'll go ahead and use a new line character here. Then we'll use two, which is who is being sent to using the receiver email, which is created above a new line. And then here we'll actually use our message and our message can just be passed in like this. So to send the email, we're gonna use a context manager. And if you're not familiar with that, basically it's just a way for the SMTP server to exit graciously after we're done with everything. So we'll do with, we'll use the SMTP lib here. We'll create an object using SMTP SSL, like right here. And then SMTP SSL takes a few parameters. So we'll go ahead and pass those right now. The first is the actual server we'll be using. Again, we define that in a parameter. So we'll use that SMTP server. Next, we need the actual port we'll be using. In this case, that's our SMTP port. And then the last thing we'll need is a context for our, our configuration and setting that to SSL with a default context. Right there. And that's a function. So we'll do that. Now that we have an object, let's call this email. And then the next thing we need to do is actually authenticate with the SMTP server using our email and using that password. So we'll do email.login and first we'll pass in our sender email and then our email password. And then now that we're authenticated with the server, let's actually send that email. So we'll do email.send. First is who is sending it. In our case, that's sender email. Next is who's actually gonna receive it. In our case, that's the phone that's gonna receive it. And we redefine that using receiver email. And then the last thing to actually send is the actual message which we define using email message. And one thing I noticed, it should be send mail, just like that. I'm just gonna quickly create a main method. And then inside this main method, let's call send SMS via email like that. We'll go ahead and pass those parameters. Let's define the parameters up here. So that's a number and that's my actual number. So if you wanna text me, go ahead. Now for the message, let's do hello world. And then we need the provider, which I'm gonna go ahead and set this to T-Mobile. And again, keep in mind that if you're using the list I made, this T-Mobile has to match with the provider one. In this case, that's down here. And then the last thing to do is actually get our credentials. Now, again, our credentials is split up into a tuple where we need to go ahead and put our email here. And then we need to go ahead and put our password on this side. And then now that we have that, let's actually populate the rest of the stuff here. So that's number, message, provider, and sender credentials. Go ahead and just call that main method so we can run our program. We'll use the if dunder name method here. And then we'll say if that's equal to main, then just call main. Okay, so now with all that in place, let's actually send ourselves that message. So we'll do a pi sms.py here. Let's run that. There we go. We're going through. It's doing its thing. Nothing happened. No error messages. We're good. And we'll see if we get it over here. And there it is. And as you can see from right here, we actually got the message. It starts with the subject line and then slash, and then it has the actual message that we sent. Okay, so now that we have that, let me show you how to send an MMS message instead of SMS. Now, everything is pretty similar, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this stuff here. And then we'll go ahead and make another function right down here, and we'll make the changes as necessary. So I'm gonna put that right there. Let's change the name to send MMS via email. Now, since we need the actual file to send in a multimedia message, let's go ahead and add it down here. I'm gonna call this file path. It's gonna be a type string. Now, something else we need is the actual MIME type of a file. So let's just add these here. There'll be two of them. There'll be a MIME main type and there'll be a MIME subtype. Now I'll get into what it's actually mean in a bit here. But for now, let's actually go back up to the top here and let's add some more things that we need for a project. So from email, mime.multipart, we need to import my multi-part and then from email, 
mime.text. We need to import mime text. And then depending on what you want to send, you'll import different mime types. But since I don't know what you'll be sending, let's actually just import a mime base and then show you how you will go about getting the mime type for different files. So from email dot mime dot base, we need to import mime base. And then we actually need the encoders for an email. So we'll do from email import the encoders. And that's about all we need. So let's go back down here to our MMS function. And now what's going to change here is the way we actually send an email. So instead of sending an email like this, that shows the subject, the receiver and the actual message, we need to create a multi-part email. Obviously the multi-part being one, the actual message itself that we're sending and then the actual file that we're attaching to that email. And then one more thing to notice is that again, here we use SMS. Now I am using T-Mobile as a provider. If we go back to our providers list, you'll notice that T-Mobile only has an SMS here but it does support MMS. So that means that it uses the same domain as SMS to actually send the MMS message. So in this case, we don't actually have to change to MMS, but if you were using something like AT&T, for example, which has two domains, one for SMS and one from MMS, you would want to go ahead and use the appropriate one. We'll use email message like before, but, but instead we'll use a my multipart object. So we'll go ahead and use that my multipart, just like that. Now let's go ahead and create our subject line. So for our subject, we'll use email message, and we'll go ahead and add the subject attribute. Go ahead and copy this. And instead of subject, we'll change this to two. This is again, our receiver, whoever's receiving our actual email. And then we need to specify who it's from. We'll do email here, we'll add from, and that's the actual sender, whoever's sending the email. So let's go ahead and attach that message part to our email. And this will be of type mime text. And that requires the actual message that we're getting from our parameters and then the actual type of message. In this case, this is the plain text message. So we'll use plain. Okay, so now we have the actual message out of the way. Notice the MIME text, right? So if you're not familiar with MIME, MIME is just a declaration of a type of file or a type of piece of content. In this case, MIME text is telling us that the piece of content that we're using is text. So now we actually have to attach the actual file that we're going to be using. So in order to send a file, we have to change the MIME type. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We'll go ahead and open that file that we're going to be using with the context manager. We'll say open the name of the file. In that case, that's our file path that we're passing in. And then we also need to specify a read type. In this case, we'll read the bytes and let's call this attachment. Now let's create a part here that we'll be using to actually send our message, which we'll is called this part. And this is what we use mime base. The main type comes first and then we have the mime subtype. And then for our part, we'll set the payload here which is the actual content we'll be using. In this case, that will be the attachment itself. And we want to read that. If you're not familiar with email technology, in order to send a file, you actually need to encode that in a certain way. And in this case, that's using base64. So from the encoders that we imported earlier, we'll encode our into base64, our part, which is the actual file that we want to send. Now to our part, we also want to go ahead and add a header. The header is going to be of type content disposition. And for that, we want to go ahead and actually add the file name that we're sending. You could actually just go ahead and send the actual full path of it. But to make things a little cleaner, let's actually go back up to the top here. And let's just import one more thing. I'm just going to import OS. OS.path. Import base name, which will give us the base name of a path. So in here, to fill out our F string, I'm going to go ahead and use base name. And then our file path. And then let's just actually attach that to our email, right? We have to attach our actual file to our email like we did before with our message. So email message that attach and let's attach our part. And then the last thing we have to do is actually send our email, but we can't just send our email of type mime multi-part. Email has no idea what that is. So we actually have to convert that into text. And the way we do that is getting out of this context manager here. And then we'll set a variable here called text, which will be our email message that will be formatted as text. In this case, that's as string. And that is a method here. So now if you go down here, we have the same thing as before from the SMS function, but we have to change our email message to that text that we just made. So this is going to be replaced with text just like that. As a test here, I have a file called karen.png, which is if you haven't seen it from my building my own Alexa series that I made. So that's that. And we'll go ahead and be using that file to actually send it. So let's go back here to our SMS.py and then go back down to the bottom here into our main function. And instead of calling SMS, this is called MMS. Remember that MMS actually has more parameters that we don't yet have. 
So we have to go ahead and add those. So the thing that we need is the actual file path. And then the other thing we need is the actual MIME type. Now, what are these MIME main type and MIME subtype? Well, if you ever done any sort of web development that involves files, you probably know what they are, but basically it's a descriptor of what a file is. Now, in this case, since we want to send this Karen.png image, that's going to be a main type of image. And then the subtype is almost always the actual extension of the file. In this case, that's a PNG. Now these can actually be looked up. So if you don't know the actual MIME type for a specific file, you could always Google MIME type for a PDF file or MIME type for a specific uh, audio file, MP3, whatever it is, look that up and you'll get something that looks like this. You'll see image like that. And then you'll see a forward slash that has something like that. So in this case, we know that image in this case is our main type and then subtype will be our PNG. So if you look them up, you'll see this all the time. And that's how you know it. Cool. So now that we have that, let's actually put this in here. So after a message, we'll go ahead and add our file path and then we'll add our my main type and our mime subtype. Save that. And then let's look at an extra comma right there. So get rid of that comma real quick. And there we go. So now we have that. Now let's actually go ahead and test it by sending it. And here we'll do the same thing. I'll just go ahead and press the up arrow here and send that message. We'll press enter. And I should get this in a bit here. There we go. I got it. And there it is. Check this out. See that? So I got the actual image. So I never changed the actual subject or anything like that. So as you can see, the subject is still there. So the subject is still there. We have a subject of sent using Python down there. And then we have hello world. And then we have the actual image that we sent via our, our actual program, which is super cool. So now you know how to send text messages using Python for free. If you like this video, make sure you leave a like. And if you're new around here, welcome. Make sure you subscribe and then check out this video over here where I personally thank you for subscribing to the channel with your name in the video. Also, if you want to watch something else, check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you might like.